What's going on everybody? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start putting some of this together. Um, it's the under seat lockable storage for the Jeep JK. It should be pretty easy to get the first few parts on. We have a bracket we have to install and we have a little block right here that we need to install that actually sits on the floorboard to keep the back end up off the ground. Now I have an idea for this. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it right away or not, but I believe I can drill a hole in the bottom of this since it actually sits on the floor. Drill a hole in the floor and put a bolt and nut through this to add a little bit more, um, a little bit more protection where this thing can't be removed as easily because the front two just bolt down to the seat. And if you have a, I don't remember what size ratchet it is, you can just un, you know, screw those bolts and take this right out. But if I put a third one in this, it's gonna make it a whole lot harder to do that. But I can go ahead and install this and still drill it from the top and not have to worry about it. So uh, that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do today. Let me get the camera turned around. Uh, We'll get this thing mounted up and then we'll get it put in the Jeep. Okay, and I know it's a little bit backwards, a little bit upside down, but this bracket right here kind of sits perfectly flush with the side of this. You can see the contour of the bracket right here. Now there is one thing that I am going to do and that is add a little bit of blue Loctite to these screws because they are just threaded in. So I am just going to add a little bit of blue Loctite Kind of like that right there. Uh, may just dab just a little bit of that off. About like that right there. And these things should just thread right in here. And they do. And that's one reason I'm adding blue Loctite is because uh, they just thread right in. And I don't want them vibrating out. I'm not saying they would vibrate out, but uh, I don't want them to become loose. Unless I want them to become loose. And this is just blue Loctite, so it does, it will come back off, no big deal. Or not come back off, but you can take these screws back out. Blue Loctite isn't permanent, but it will stop it from just vibrating out. There you have it. Brackets on, should be good to go. All tight, and the blue Loctite will hold it in place. Now back here in the back, we have this little bracket here. It goes sideways. There are four screws here as well. We're gonna do the same thing to those. And like I said, the reason I'm just gonna go ahead and do that is because um, I can always screw it from the top down and uh, make my hole in it. It's not a big deal there. And then I can probably get a wrench in from the side to actually, uh, to actually tighten it down because there is a big hole right here. It would just make it harder for someone to steal if they wanted to. So that's the reason I'm thinking about doing that. So I don't need to remove that bracket to actually uh, to actually drill that out if I didn't, didn't want to. All right, there we go. All the pre-assembly's done. Okay, here's what it should look like when you're done. The bracket will come right up like this fits nicely, the back end sits like this. And this is what sits against the floorboard to keep the back end up off the off the floorboard of the Jeep so it doesn't tilt or put in a bind or anything. So uh, this, like I said, I think I can just drill a hole here, put that bolt through it, and it would make it more difficult to actually uh, to get this removed. Not saying that somebody could remove it or would remove it. I'm sure they could if they had the right uh, bolts, but surely somebody would see them doing that to your Jeep. But if you take the doors off your Jeep or the top off, um, that will make it a little bit more secure. So now we just need to go out and install this in the Jeep. Okay, so now we're out the Jeep. It's time to get this lock box installed. Like I said, this thing's got some heft to it. I'm really surprised about how weighty this is. I actually let my wife just hold it. She was a god. I didn't expect it to be a heavy. And I didn't either. Um, this thing feels really, really sturdy. And unlike the tough box or the toughy box, it's actually sealed completely inside. You can't see the box anywhere. Not saying the Tuffy box isn't as strong as this one, but there's just no access point to this except from the front. So uh, I don't know if this is strong or not, but I still feel like if I decided I wanted to, I could take this back out, drill a hole right here, and actually mount this to the bottom of the Jeep in the back, just like the Tuffy box is and I secure it just as well. The only difference I see that I like better, it looks like the Tuffy box, I think I think that's what it's called. If I remember correctly, I think that's what it's called. It seems to open further and you can get into it a little easier towards the back end of it. 
But enough with the rambling, uh, let's get it in the Jeep. Okay, before we get started, there are gonna be a few tools you'll need. An 18 millimeter and a ratchet to take off the seat bolts. You're gonna need a T30 Torx bit and I have a little ratchet and I don't know if all Jeeps come with these. This one didn't, but my last Jeep had one in it. It's just a little pouch that has uh, some tools on the inside of it. And if you don't have one of these, you can pick one up on Amazon. They're not that expensive and it's, it's highly recommended because you can basically take apart the whole Jeep with those what's in that little pouch right there. So I do need a T30 and it had one in it. Uh, I am going to use some clippers because you do have to take off some wires and re-zip tie them. So I need something to cut the zip ties. And then all I reason I have the Leatherman Wave here is uh, the wires I have to take loose actually are popped in the little plate. You actually have to take the plate off. So I'm going to use these just to pop the wires out of the plate. And uh, that should be pretty much all you need. They keep sliding down the seat. I tried to organize them nice and neat, but that didn't happen. Okay, I'm gonna try my best to show you what I have to take off. There's a little plate that them wires are sitting on and there's some T30 Torx bits. You can just see one in the edge right there. And there are two of those and you have to remove that uh, little plate right there. And you need to remove those wires and those wires will zip tie in the holes that you remove the T30 Torx bits from. So this shouldn't be too hard. Um, just have to pop those wires loose. I don't know if I can get you, yeah, you can see right there, you have to have a little push pin thing. Um, we just have to pop those wires out and then remove that plate and re-zip tie them. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And there's probably no way in the world I can show you that while I'm doing it. So I wanted to show it to you before I actually removed it. Okay, so you can see right there that I just have these things zip tied. I'm trying to show you zip tied back in the hole, kind of pushed out of the way. I'm hoping that wire right there is high enough. We're gonna find out here in a minute, but it should be and everything clears and we should be good to go. Next, all we have to do is remove the two seat screws. You did see that washer move. I already have loosened them. I just ain't took them all the way out, but you need to remove the two front seat bolts. Okay, now you can use a regular ratchet to take that out, but I'm gonna tell you, this made things a lot easier. My bolts aren't rusted or anything like that. I mean, this Jeep is in really good shape, but they were just tight all the way through. I don't know why. Um, let me inspect the bolt. Doesn't really look galled or anything like that. It was it was just snug as it was coming out. So I, I got my half inch impact and uh, got it out a whole lot quicker. Just a, just a pro tip. Okay, next, you just slide this in. This one should go underneath this leg, and this one should go on top of this leg. It's not difficult. I actually just slid it back in there, and it, it wasn't hard to slide. Nothing's really in the way. You may have to move your plugs over a little bit that you actually zip-tied, but other than that, it went right in. So let me fit underneath there, and I'll show you exactly how it's supposed to fit. Okay, so right here you can see this tab actually goes underneath this leg. I've got the bolt restarted back in. And this tab actually went on top of that leg and I got the bolt started back in there. Now all we have to do is reinstall our bolts. Now I may use the half inch driver just to drive these down a little bit, but you do not want to use something like that to tighten these down. That probably has way too much torque on that. So uh, I'm just going to use that just to get them down close. And then I'm actually just going to use my ratchet to finish tight, um, snugging them all the way down. Not sure what the torque's supposed to be, but I'm just going to snug them down real good. Um, again, you don't want to use the big half inch driver to tighten them all the way down because uh, you might either strip out the hole or break the bolts or something like that. So uh, I'm just going to get them close because it's faster. And now I'm going to finish it up with the, with the ratchet. I'll show you the finished project here in just a second. Okay, moment of truth time. There it is. Now I'm probably going to replace this stuff. I'll show y'all if I do that at a later date. I'm not sure I like this. I'd like to have something that's actually like a tacky filling or something like that, like a cabinet liner or something. But um, that's as far as it comes out. And there's still quite a bit back in there. That's why I was talking about the other one looked like it came out further. But that's just a minor complaint. It slides very, very easy as you can see right there. And then just locks right back and you can't get into it. I think that's awesome to put valuables in and stuff when you've got the doors off your Jeep or something. It's almost a must have for a Jeep. And there's also one that you can get for the driver side or passenger side, I mean, um, to add as well. Okay, so there it is. Very simple install, very easy to do. and just adds a little bit of extra security to your Jeep. I know some of the other compartments lock, but they're just plastic. And this is a pretty stout metal. That's it. That thing's in there really tight. 
And I don't know if I'm gonna put the back bolt in or not because if somebody goes to steal that, they're gonna have to work to do it. And surely to goodness, somebody would see them taking this out of your Jeep because more than likely, I'm not gonna have my Jeep somewhere with the doors off that's in a secluded area where somebody would wanna steal that. I don't usually take the doors off my Jeep anyway. I take the top off, but um, surely to goodness, um, I would either be back in time or somebody would catch them trying to take out the bolts. I mean, you'd also have to have a tool kit to do it. So I'm not sure, I might do that at a later date, I may not, but that's a pretty simple install. I give it literally like a one and a half inches, so simple to do um, and well worth the money. Uh, again, I got the best top one because it was a little cheaper and I don't regret that. Like I said, the only thing that I wish the other that this had that the other one looks like it has, and I don't know if it does, it looks like the drawer opens a little further. Very minor inconvenience. Um, if you're out of the Jeep, you know, it's not really an inconvenience at all. If you're sitting in the seat trying to reach back, it might be a little bit of an inconvenience, but it's definitely not worth the 40 or $50, in my opinion, to buy the other one over this one. Hope y'all like this video. I'll link this in the description below. If you want to pick one up, please like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.